Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you all of the bassoon goodies that I've been picking up as well as I will be giving reviews of many of the products that I have been testing out. The first thing that I wanted to share with you is the shirt that I'm wearing. At the very top of the shirt you can probably see that there are little bassoons. This was sent to me by one of my students in New York and it says there's, there's no, no such no thing as too many too bassoons. Many bassoons. Today, in this video, we are going to test that theory. This is because I have recently picked up two new bassoons. Now, these are new to me bassoons. These bassoons are old, they are beat up, and they are helping me on my bassoon repair journey. I have been apprenticing under Ken Potzik. I am not just learning bassoon repair on the fly on my own. I try to keep as much of it private as possible because Ken is not on any social medias. He is the polar opposite of me where I put all of my adventures out there to you guys. So I'm trying to be respectful and find the balance for the both of us. Now, as part of this, when we were looking at the cohort that was sent to me, he just kept saying, this is in good condition. We need a bad bassoon. And when he meant bad bassoon, a bassoon that had not been taken care of. Bassoon that really offered an opportunity to learn and grow because there was so much damage to it. So I did pick up a really old Schreiber off of eBay, a great learning bassoon. In fact, this bassoon is already social media famous because I put it out there with the giant crack that is in the boot joint of that bassoon. I also picked up another old Colert. This one is one that I believe will be really great for the students that are in my studio that are looking for bassoons to purchase that are relatively cost effective for them, but will give them the warmth, just kind of a diamond in the rough. Let's talk about some of the other goodies that I have bought. The first of these is another type of wire. This is McMaster car wire. This wire is just a little bit more narrow than the 22 gauge. So it's really flexible and easy to work with. Now I have found that cane that is already quite soft, it doesn't offer the support that I want it to have so that I will lose some of the intonation on E and C sharp and the stabilization of that. But for cane that is really hard cane and that I am worried about it being dampened in any way by the wire. This wire is fantastic for it. Now I do have to say that McMaster car is kind of like a wholesale dealer. So, you know, major companies will send them mass amount of products and then they will limit that down to smaller quantities so that they can sell to individuals like myself. And because of that, this was originally put on a separate spool and then spun onto here. So the wire does have some indents in it. So it's it's not going to come off the spool completely smooth. So you do spend a little bit of extra time smoothing out those little indents before you'll end up putting it on a reed so that the wire sits flush against the bark of the cane. Another thing that I have gone ahead and picked up is a zoom recorder. Now I picked up a zoom recorder largely because of the So You Bought a Raff Reed video. Now that video really pushed me and that's part of why I do YouTube. You guys are constantly helping me grow in my bassoon career. And in that video I talk about the shadow that is around the uh, sound when you flex the tip of the blades. And I found that the microphones that I'm using, they are good for speaking. That's what they're meant for. But it wasn't great for doing a lot of audio recording and some of that sound with the shadow that would happen, it was lost simply because it doesn't have the ability to pick up the same overtones. So in order to do some of the sound quality videos that I wanna offer you guys, I felt I needed something that I could easily and quickly record on. It also has the ability to add in auxiliary microphones so that if I am doing something that I want even more depth and tone colors, I can plug in extra mics. I also have found that the fastest way to get myself to improve playing bassoon is to record myself. So I've been playing a lot of chamber music concerts recently. That's why I haven't been as active on YouTube is because I've been doing so many concerts and I want to make sure that I have those archived and I can hear what I'm doing that I really enjoy and also what I need to refine about my playing and recording myself is the best way to get there. And I found that the Zoom recorder really does the job. Another item that I have picked up is the Lindsay Langwell book bassoon and contrabassoon. Now I picked this one up because the collar that you guys sent to me is a flat back bassoon. Now flat back means that the long joint or they're also known as the bass joint. It has a portion of it that has like a tabletop on it that is flat. And you guys have asked me to do a video about that and what that means and how that happened in bassoon history and why it's not on current instruments. And I wanted to make sure that I have all of the facts before I ever do a video. And I was referencing the cot book as well as the heavy 
Bible book, and the Cop book specifically referenced the Langwell book several times in the history of Bassoon, and I wanted to make sure that I had it on hand and I was able to cross-reference it. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss out, be sure that you're subscribed because I do have a video coming on the history of flat back bassoons, why they made them, and why they aren't currently making them. My goal is to make reed making affordable and accessible for everyone. Now, as part of creating the affordable reed tools kit, I wanted to make sure I included an affordable reamer. So I had Justin Miller send me a reamer. So you've got one that's a spiral, and then you've got one that's kind of like a rough file. I have to say that the one that's like a rough file, I've had good experience with that. I've used it on several different reeds throughout all of my reed making journey. This one is great at keeping the inside of the reed smooth. I do have to say though that the one that's a spiral reamer, I asked him to send me other options because this one was not one of my favorites. I felt that it would catch on the inside of the reed, that it was hard to get even pressure when I was reaming the inside of the reed, and that the blades just weren't sharp enough to be something that I could commit to for long term, and that I could recommend wholeheartedly to you guys as something that was a great option. So Justin is sending me a couple of other reamers. I will test those out, but this is in part why the affordable reed tools kit has been delayed is because I am not just signing off on all of the products that I am being sent. I am testing everything and making it sure that it's something that I like and that you guys are going to like in the long term. Okay guys, I hope that a lot of this is helpful for what I am working on in my bassoon adventures. I would love to hear what you guys are picking up for your bassoon adventures. I love being inspired by each and every one of you. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of the future videos that I have mentioned, be sure to click that subscribe button if you're not already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!